The following KQED production was produced in high definition. Yes, check please, people. It's all about licking your plate. The food was just fabulous. I should be in psychoanalysis for the amount of money I spend in restaurants. I had a horrible experience. I don't even think we were at the same restaurant. And everybody, I'm sure, saved room for those desserts. You better. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check Please Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. We have three guests, and each one recommends one of their favorite spots, and the other two go check them out to see what they think. This week, Janet Fragakis is a primary educator and mother of two, who just happens to look a little like me and live <laughs> in my hometown. She spends all her spare time cooking and trying new eateries. When it comes time to choosing a restaurant or a dinner out, she returns to her pick time and time again. And accordion player and octogenarian, Ed Masolo's been around for a while. He's had time to decide his restaurant preferences. For him, Italian family style with white tablecloths, soft music, and a calm atmosphere lead him to his spot every time. Right. But first, media guru Derek Johnson's been scouring the mission for bona fide Mexican food. He now considers himself an expert and will happily recommend the best place for a burrito or carnitas. But for genuine all-around authenticity, he says you can't beat his choice. It's not fancy or glamorous, to say the least. <laughs> it's on York Street in San Francisco. It's Marta's Kitchen in the J&B Club. J&B Club has been here about 70 years with a neon sign hanging there for about 50 years and we've been many different things in that time. We've been things like considered a cop bar or a fireman's bar, old timers bar, but nowadays we're pretty much everybody's bar. About a year ago we brought in Martha's Kitchen. What makes us special is because we do our own ingredients. We have special recipes that are back from my grandma that she passed it on to us. We make our salsas um, from scratch, chiles and everything. So we're keeping the tradition and I think that's what makes our food very different. It's, uh, it's very laid back. If you've got time to have a couple of margaritas and for your food to be made, you know, with love from scratch, then you come to the right place. But if you're in a big hurry, it could be a little tough. <laughs> Me and my partner, we were born and raised in San Francisco. Martha's family, I think pretty much everybody is born and raised in San Francisco. It's a very progressive neighborhood and uh, everybody's welcome. Everybody seems to love it. Derek, so the, the J&B Club, it's, it's like a bar from the 1940s, right? It is. Yeah, it's definitely, it's, a, it's my local bar actually. It happens to be right on the corner a block away from where I live. And um, I've seen that bar around probably for 15 years since I've lived in the neighborhood. and um, One day I saw a little sign out there that said Marta's Kitchen and went in there and I saw just some people eating and decided I was actually just hungry enough, sat down and um, just was wowed. And I had the burrito uh, deluxe and we were sitting out in the back patio, it was a sunny day, mm -hmm. we had a margarita in hand, it's a bar, the jukebox is playing and all of a sudden this burrito came out that was just perfectly broiled the cheese. I've never had anybody do that before in any of the taquerias where they take the cheese, put it on the outside, mm -hmm. broil it and then serve these little dollops of uh, guacamole, sour cream, and tomato and salsa. And it was, you know, fork and knife burrito, which mm -hmm. is not your traditional mission style, and um, it was awesome, and from there I was hooked. This is, this is some serious business when you talk to somebody in San Francisco, say, what is your favorite burrito place? People have busted right. fisticuffs right. on this stuff. Yeah. People really take this thing down to a point where there's, there's websites about it. Right. They're, um, so you're putting yeah. this out there, this is the best burrito that you've... Uh, well, I'm putting this out as... I'm this is, this is, this is, this I'm going to put this out right. as this is one of the <coughs> best burritos that you could get in the mission. Okay. Um, but not in a taqueria format. So if okay. you're looking for a traditional taqueria-style burrito, this is definitely not that type of right. burrito. You can't eat this... Right with your hands, you right. need a fork and knife. We love Mexican food. So we walk in, we realize it's a bar. Yeah. It's a bar. 
Oh, Shout out to Dave McCool on the way. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a bar. We walk in, though, immediately the bartender was so gregariously warm, comes yes. over, he pats George. He hey, how you nice doing? Day. Let me get you a drink. Great atmosphere, and it was very clean. Mm. Immedi I immediately went to the bathroom. Very clean. I love that. And Billy Holiday kind of I mean, it is kind of a hole it's in a bar. the wall. I mean, yeah. it's a bar. It's, it's a, a bar. It's a, you know. So we walk in the back patio, sat down, and it looked like some regulars after work, and there was a lot of uh, bicycle cyclists yeah. there. Really nice atmosphere, very casual. Marta came to our table. We ordered the nachos. Um, I ordered the chili Colorado burrito. And my husband had a chili relano, a taco. He had the combination, chili relano, taco, and then the chicken enchilada mole. Outstanding. Right. They've gotten a lot of praise for their mole. Outstanding mole. We've yeah. had mole several mm -hmm. places. Probably the best I've ever had. Very chocolatey with a little hint of yeah. spice. So kind of sweet and spicy. Loved it. But the flavors were right. delicious. It was much more simple. Chopped up tomatoes, not a bunch of salsa. Slices of avocado, not a big, th not a big thing, thing of guacamole. Delicious. Fresh? So, fre very fresh. And she was, I have to say, I had a little fondness for Marta. Delightful woman and the great authentic Mexican food. And Ed, what about you? In walking in, I, uh, I wasn't impressed. There was a bar there, and there's a pool table four or five feet away from it. Right. And uh, there's two empty uh, wooden tables there. I said, well, I didn't want to eat dinner next to the pool table because I figured I was going to get in the head with a cue stick. Probably. <laughs> Possibly. But they said, well, the why don't you go back to the patio back mm -hmm. there? So I said, well, fine. There's got to be, you know, more of a restaurant atmosphere uh, in here. You know, four of us went in there right. and uh, walked out the patio, and there was two tables. You know, we stood there wondering, well, doesn't anybody guide us? Isn't there tables that we can right. all sit down at? You right, know? it's mm -hmm. very casual, and that, it, and that brings I, right. I've never seen anything that casual in a restaurant. <laughs> That's really <laughs> casual. But the meal was superb. I'm not one for Mexican food. I very seldom, I'm not that familiar with it. I had. Um, uh, the beans and the uh, rice uh, and the grilled prongs, mm. which were excellent. You couldn't beat the price. I mean, you know, for uh, was it 14 or 15 dollars? We had a glass of wine and the meal. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So but really, other you got than value. that, it wouldn't be a restaurant for me. I right. I felt out of like I. I out of place somewhere in there. It, you it weren't in your biker shorts? And well, that's it. Know. Maybe if I come in my shorts, right. maybe they'll all run out. I don't know. <laughs> Ride your bike next time. <laughs> Probably so. <laughs> right. But it was, a, it was a delightful experience, I'll say that. I had the carne asada special tempicana, which came with a strip of, of carne asada, uh, a beef taco, um, a chili relleno, mm -hmm. and enchilada. And I think that that's $12. Right. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's, and it comes with rice, beans, right. and yeah. I mean, this is food that you take home with. The ingredients are fresh. Right. Everything about that Good just food. rocks. And George and I said, we, when we sat down, we ordered the nachos. Did you, yeah. But it took about 45 minutes to get <laughs> them, and right. George kept walking. So, you know, they'd peek out, oh, can I help you? And sure. He, he comes back and goes, oh, they're frying them fresh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, and you don't that's, that. fresh, that's fresh tortillas. <laughs> they go back and peel the avocados. Not a box. That's not a we box saw right. them walk downstairs with the bags of the tortillas. Right. 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 So that was outstanding. So right. what people should do is place an order when they get in the bar for the guac, <laughs> guac. go in and get their margarita Absolutely. or their beer right. or whatever. That's a great place. And then <laughs> in the patio, <laughs> right. have a good and conversation. And, and they, they pour a nice stiff drink. They, they did. Yeah. Yeah. They, they pour a good margarita, which yeah. is a key thing because I find when somebody's because like I like the combination. They've got Tecate on draft. Right. They've got um, they have some good Belgian they've got, beers. They've got some decent selection back there. Um, everybody's attentive and really sweet. Mm -hmm. um, but you know the key to that is once again is like if you're comfortable with this being a bar type of environment, it's a shack style restaurant. You right. Know? Um, I like to say, but you know what. It's not really that good, and nobody should eat there because you know. <laughs> yeah, no. because I was just gonna say, it's no. your restaurant. You need to so wrap listen, it up and tell I'm, people why they need to eat there. Don't eat there. Don't <laughs> eat there at all. I don't remember what street it's on. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't recommend it in the least bit. Janet, would you go back? I would go back if I were in the area. For me, I'm, I live farther away. I don't get down to the Mission District that often. But if I was, it would be a place I would go to pick up a burrito. It was really good. And Ed, how about you? If I go out to eat. I like to sit down at a nice table and enjoy a nice meal. I will admit, though, that the food I had there, it was excellent. It was good. There were good cooks. Would I go back? I doubt it. I doubt that I'd go back. Okay. Know. 
If you would like to visit Marta's Kitchen in the J&B Club, it's located on 20th Street at York in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-824-4190. It's open for lunch and dinner, which is served until midnight or later, Monday through Saturday. Reservations are not accepted, and the average tab per person without drinks is around $15. Satisfying locally grown Mediterranean inspired cuisine takes place in an old brick building next to the river in the small historic town of Petaluma. You'll find this sophisticated spot on Petaluma Boulevard North. It's called Central Market. I've been a cook my whole life. I've opened other restaurants for other people, but this one's mine. And with that, um, comes my true expression of what I like about food. I grew up in New Orleans and there was a grocery store down there called Central Grocery. Um, we have railroad tracks right behind us, we have the river right behind us. That's the road to the ocean, north and south. We are Central. The name Central Market occurred to me because of the central location and the ideas that I had for the menu. The menu reads like a market list, and the thought of the menu was to, to always respect the, the seasons and to respect all the amazing purveyors and producers we have around us. Our food is actually pretty simple, um, which I think makes it easier to enjoy. You really don't need to know anything about our food except where your mouth is located. Uh, just taste it, enjoy it. Now Janet, Petaluma has changed so much in the last few years. I mean, getting chic. We are fancy now. <laughs> We're getting fancy. And Central Market kind of goes along with that, that chic theme, right? It does. It, Central Market is in a great little spot on the corner. They have beautiful window boxes out in front with flowers. You walk in, it's got you know, a wonderful open air feeling and the kitchen is open so you can see them working and the food's outstanding. And for me, I like it because it's kid friendly. <laughs> and you can go casual, you can go casual, you can bring your kids or you can dress up and I've been there for my anniversary. So, so. It's, it's a place that could belong in San Francisco, in the city, but it has rustic right. cooking and... I think this meal is on par with any restaurant in San Francisco. It's that good. It's that good. And uh, what was the experience that you had, Derek? Um, well, we went in there, it was a Sunday evening, early in the, early in the side, it was a gorgeous day, and so we decided in, uh, to sit by the river, in mm -hmm. the backside. Right. Um, and there's a patio, you know, there's out, a patio there out there that you can sit along the Petaluma River. Um, you see that like, the, there's right. A, right over the bridge over the Petaluma River. Um, huge open space. That's the first thing you notice. The open kitchen, the open space in that mm -hmm. place. Uh, we, were, we were greeted immediately. It was very gracious. Um, we thought that since it was so nice, we thought we'd just ask this, uh, even though we had a reservation, if we could sit outside because we hadn't specifically asked for that. And they were very uh, accommodating. I was really impressed with the, the menu. The menu had a very interesting selection, something that I would also concur with. The type of stuff that you see courageous chefs try to you know, go off and, and accomplish. And Tony Najola, who's the chef and owner, um, ha is from New Orleans, so you get kind of a, you know, the, right. the, the, that sort of flair to it as well. Um, he also cooked at Ravenswood Winery, so you get a lot of meat and grilled there things. There is, and, and there's a lot of that. You can see, like, you know, there's the, the, the heartier fare of the, you know, there's the braised short ribs and right. the, the, you know, pork confit combined. So what did you have that you enjoyed? Well, um, we started off, surprisingly, uh, the, with the salads. The, the appetizer menu was where, it, the first thing I was just, I could throw a dart at that. I mean, there were so many things that just kind of came out. And so we went for kind of some of the more interesting or courageous style, you know, menus. We went for a watermelon and arugula salad. Mm -hmm. And I have to tell you, in that circumstance, um, I really do wish that it was an arugula salad with watermelon uh, because it really came out very watermelony. Um, though on a hot summer day, it was really nice. It just almost was just mm -hmm. more flavorful that might pull it towards the sweeter side. Um, but it was still really good. And, and, and other appetizers, uh, you had the burrata. Cheese. The burrata cheese, which is similar to a fresh and mozzarella, and an absolute, and then the sweet twice roasted red peppers, fabulous. Right. Great flavors, fresh, yeah. and also what 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 we had was the. Uh, 
kampachi, which is a sushi mm -hmm. in the tuna family, and it was served with a fresh guacamole. It was like butter. It melted in your mouth. Yeah. I love kampachi. And you're right that there are several different types of dishes right. that you can order that And then what did you have for pot. appetizers? Appetizers, uh, I, I ordered the calamari. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was frankly a little disappointed. Okay. Why, not crunchy not enough? Not no, no. The calamari were excellent. But I thought the whole place was just pricey for one uh, thing. Okay. So that's the first uh, thing that we you got, noticed was the we got price. Yes. We got five calamari. Ah, uh, okay. Five. Twelve dollars. Okay. Now calamari to me is probably be the least priced seafood you can buy. <laughs> you should be able to get a lot of calamari for $12. <laughs> and uh, it's on a salsa vanity, which is no big secret. Uh, <laughs> I thought um, I thought everything that you said, both of you, was fine. The food was, was fine. Though I'm not one for experimenting. Maybe I'm too old. But <laughs> experimenting with um, a lot of these foods, watermelon in a salad already, you cut me off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I tried it. I, I'm with you. I'm willing right to there. give it a shot. You know. <laughs> what but about the pork If it was awesome, I would have told you. Right. Did the you have the hanger steak? Tell us what you had. But what I had was the uh, the um, Angus ribs, three mm -hmm. ribs. On the risotto. Mm -hmm. We had that as well. How delicious was that? And that's a specialty of well, the house. Well, let ribs. me tell you, the presentation is what discouraged me. They served it in a mound. The layer I like look. Layer right. look. I don't like the layer look. I like to be able to eat my ribs on the side or taste my risotto or the beans and spinach sure. aside. Number one. Well, let's talk about because Janet, you had the ribs. And we had the, the ribs. We had the ribs too. The ribs. And, let's and talk about the short ribs because they're, they're known for those melt in your mouth kind of right. ribs. Right. They're good. Yeah. They're, they're good. slow braised. And, and Central Market is known for slow food. Slow cooking, right. right. So you sit, it's slow, good you're served. not rushed. I think the motto is slow cooked, right. good served. Right. And the short ribs are, I think, are true to that statement. They fall off the bone. In fact, my husband had it and I was taking his plate. It it was fabulous. I think that's in fact I've thought about it ever since we went and had it, <laughs> and I'm going to go back <laughs> before I start my diet again. The bread that they brought out, and it's a, it's a um, I love the bread. Okay, uh, that's your taste. As an Italian, <laughs> I did not, but what I and a lot of restaurants. I want to hear uh, Petaluma is the capital. A lot of restaurants do this, and I don't understand it. They bring out the bread and they slice it halfway through. That means that everybody at the table picks it up and, of course, that bread, you're right, it's doughy and you can stretch it out to here before you tear a slice off of it. <laughs> and then everybody you at the table... You might get more, though. You get a little bit what? extra. Just take the you have people gourmet have a fight. food, gourmet prices. You want your bread slice? And it's served to you on a paper, brown paper place setting. Not a tablecloth like this. My plate, probably with the appetizer and all, came to close to sixty dollars mm -hmm. for right. the tip. Right. Yeah, that's that's right. what we paid per person, right? right? Yeah, and I didn't think it was worth it. Food is excellent. Mm -hmm. I don't like the layered part of it. Right. You like I the flavor. I, I like the flavor. It's fine. Um, the prices are a little higher, but I feel that when you go there, it's such an experience. Petaluma is charming, and Central Market is right in the middle of it all. Like I said. And it's great food, and you don't have to be dressed up. You can go in your shorts. You can wear your, you know, casual clothes. Bring your kids, and there's something on the menu for everybody. Derek, if I lived up in the North Bay, I would definitely go back and take a look at it again. I'd like to see it in a different environment, maybe a Friday or Saturday. Mm -hmm. Try a few other things on the menu. Um, outside of that, I'd probably have a difficult time justifying the drive up for just that dining experience. And yeah. Ed, for the money we spent, I think I'd stick to San Francisco. Okay. All right. Well, if you would like to try Central Market, it's on Petaluma Boulevard North in Petaluma. The telephone number is 707-778-9900. It's open every day for dinner with pizza afternoons on Fridays and weekends. Reservations are recommended, and the average tab per person without drinks is around $35. Northern Italian cooking aromas waft through the air and draw Ed into this local establishment. The Tuscan menu, generous portions, and reasonable prices entice him once or twice every month. 
It's on San Mateo Avenue in San Bruno, and it's called West Coast Cafe. Uh, West Coast Cafe has been around for two years, and we specialize in veal, pastas, any other things. We make our own bread, um, our gnocchi. We have lamb, steak, things like that. We started with a small menu, and every week, every month, we bring different things, and we want to keep doing that. Italian food 20 years ago was uh, different than it uh, is now. Before, it was more creamy, more butter, more big portions, and now it's more healthy, I think. It's uh, light. We researching always uh, new ideas, new recipes, new ingredients. But the main thing is the customers ask what they want. The greatest passion is uh, when I make a dish and uh, you see the response of our customers here at West Coast Cafe. You see the satisfaction and it's the feelings that, that you can express and it, I, I love it. Okay, Ed, you say the price is right on this place. Is that, uh, is that why you like to go there? Well, it's not just for the price that I go there. I, I go to a number of, uh, I prefer Italian restaurants because I'm of, of Italian heritage and I grew up with a lot of these foods. But this is a place, really, really beautiful food that they prepare. Uh, it's just prepared perfectly. Whether it's a primo piatti with its uh, linguine or or um, uh, gnocchi or whatever you have if you like that or spaghettis uh, they have 13 dishes to select from mm -hmm. and they also have uh, about nine uh, regular meat type or fish or poultry that are done like scallopini or salt in bocca uh, dishes that they're they're known dishes they're not uh, flavored with uh, 15,000 different ingredients. These are traditional Tuscan. Yeah, this traditional. is classic. But they are done to perfection. I ordered, and I love, the calamari steak, which is done in the lemon um, with capers and white wine. And they usually have polenta on the side, which is buttery and soft. Now, you lived in Rome, and you speak Italian, right? That's true. And Speak um, a little Italian for us. Yeah, You'll have all the women wooing oh. out there. Abbiamo mangiato qualcosa con lei. Well, I have to say, my preface of walking into that place is I so wanted to love this place. Um, I, first thing we walked in is like the ample parking, the, the great seating, the lighting was awesome. There was a few people already in there, so I knew that that was a good thing. It was like 6 in the afternoon. Um, and it, it was so reasonable. I was like, gosh, this reminded me of a bunch of restaurants I remember back in New York where you can get a great classic Italian food mm -hmm. at totally reasonable prices. And uh, I was ready. I, I was basically, I just wanted to sit there, put like, you know, a, a nice bib around me, put a, you know, <laughs> a fork and a knife in my hands. And it's like, bring it on, you know, uh, the Costa Nostra style. I like in those types of environments, it's exactly like Ed says, to go with the traditional, go with their specialties. You know, if this is the case and they're gonna mm -hmm. put their name on it and say, this is the house specialty, bring it on. And so we got the lasagna ragu. They had a homemade clam chowder that day, Caesar salad. Went for the traditionals. And I have to tell you, um, both came up short. I had to put pepper and Tabasco into the, the, the clam chowder. Um, the, the Caesar salad was just kind of like bland. Mm -hmm. um, so, but I'm still really wanting it. And then this is where it really kind of fell apart was when the main dishes came out. The, the, the key thing was, it was being dropped on us like like lunch service. Right. Um, I was, mm -hmm. a I mean, if we had not stopped to have conversation, we'd have been in and out of there in around 30 or 40 minutes. So they were trying to get to the meal fast. And it seemed like that, which might be a, a nice thing, but I'm a big fan of like, you know, geez, the Italians are the people who invented the leisurely dinner, right. the long three hour lunch. Loved the decor, loved the uh, the, 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 the tablecloths, um, mm -hmm. everything about it. the lighting was great, but, then the I lasagna came I love when we talk out. about lighting, you yeah. know? The lighting is great. To. No, it's true. I'm on a date. It's true. I'm on a date. I'm you, drinking some wine. I'm in an Italian restaurant. <laughs> you know, I, I want to talk to her. to be Hey, you know, how yeah. you doing? Yeah. You know? yeah. um, unfortunately, the lasagna came out, and it was it was inedible to a point. Oh. I I'd started off. Oh. Really? It really was. I got to a halfway, and I couldn't finish it. And I realized it was salted way beyond its, its as, as a max up. Oh. And, and, and Janet, what about you? Because I actually really enjoyed it. Very pleasantly surprised. My in-laws went with us. We had 
Um, several appetizers, the sauteed calamari and the oh, tomato I sauce, love those. fantastic. Mm -hmm. Really, really good. Great. We had the bruschetta, we had the caprese salad, all were very simple yes. and good few things that really shine. They're veal dishes, which oh, yeah. four of us had the veal. I had this veal, it was a special, the veal stuffed cannelloni and a tomato cream sauce. I ate both. <laughs> Delicious, melt in your mouth, the, right. the crepe on, oh. Right. My husband had the Parmesan, amazing veal. Cut it with a fork. Yeah. And veal can and be tough sometimes. You know. yeah, veal can if be if an Italian restaurant has good veal, you're good. You're good yes. to go. It and you feel like the prices And were, I thought the were, prices were uh, great. Yes. Good and yeah, great uh, prices. It's a one restaurant where I said before, the French bread is sliced all the way through. <laughs> oh, that's nice. You see, I, got, and, and I have to be honest with you. Like, I have to also tell you, from, you know, from my perspective, you know, I don't eat veal. And, I, you know, and, and I'm looking at this as an, a dining experience. And it very well could be that I, I, I misordered. Well, now, Ed, it's your restaurant, so give us a quick summary. A nice place to have a family-style Tuscan dinner. The prices are reasonable. The food is excellent. Okay, and Janet? <laughs> we loved it. It was very accommodating for our large group. My kids were with us, and it was delicious, and the veal was the star. And Derek? But two people in their 30s having a date it just didn't, play, you know, the food was, was disappointing and the service mm -hmm. was rushed. All right, if you would like to try West Coast Cafe, it's on San Mateo Avenue in San Bruno. The telephone number is 650-588-1912. It's open for lunch and dinner every day with dinner only on Sundays. Reservations are recommended on weekends, and the average tab per person without drinks is around $25. I want to thank my guests on this week's show, Derek Johnson, Janet Fragakis, and Ed Masolo. Derek's tucked away pick of Marta's Kitchen in the J&B Club in San Francisco is truly a hidden gem. Ed's not crazy about Mexican fare, but loved his dish. For Janet, the food was a trip back to Mexico, mm. and although it's not in a location that either would return, they both appreciated the authenticity. Janet's Central Market in Petaluma struck Ed as too pricey, and while the food was good, he prefers a slightly more traditional presentation. <laughs> Derek was disappointed with a couple of his dishes, but the others compensated, and he can't wait to return for the latkes and pork confit. Mm. Yeah. Lastly, Ed's local haunt of West Coast Cafe in San Bruno. Derek was disappointed and wouldn't return. Janet disliked the gnocchi, but thought the veal dishes mm. were incredible, good. and the service efficient and gracious. Well, our time is up. Don't forget that if you want more discussion, you can view this and all the shows online or download the podcast. You can find out about the wines we've been tasting today, along with photos and comments from our viewers. Join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I hope to see you then. Cheers. 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 Hello. Salud. This show is available in high definition, Comcast On Demand, and via podcast. For additional information on the restaurants featured, to comment, or to apply to be on the show, go to our website at kqed.org slash check please. A KQED television production.